I shall waffle on for a little bit just while everyone pulls up a chair or a sun lounger, depending on where you're watching from. Um, good morning and welcome. I've got my coffee on the go. I've got a cold drink on the go. So I hope everyone's doing okay today. Oh dear, lovely. Just wait for Stuart's in the room with you today. So hopefully I shall get a text message from him shortly so you can hear me. Good morning, Sharon. Good morning, Helen. Here you all come. All my lovely friends joining us for another groovy Tuesday here at Clarity Stamp. How are we all doing? We all faring up okay in this hot weather? A little bit warm out there today. Um, fans on underneath. So um, I've got plenty of liquids. So it should keep me going for the hour. So um, hope you're all staying inside, staying cool, staying in the shade, not going out. <laughs> so um, it's lovely to have your company again. Another groovy Tuesday. So um, hopefully you can hear me. Good morning, Pat. Watching in the garden under a parasol. That sounds absolutely wonderful. I bet it's lovely in the shade, isn't it? Good morning, Nahid, everybody. I'm hoping you can hear me. I'm just waiting for Stuart to give me the, the all clear on that. If you can't hear me, start waving at the screen, sort of going, I can't hear you. Um, yeah, apparently it is um, cooler in Scotland, isn't it, Hilda? It seems to be sort of like north of the, sort of like the southern part of the M25 and upwards. And then I think it stops just in the beginning of um, Scotland, according to the weather forecast that I saw last night. But that can all change. I looked at the, the week ahead for Edenbridge and it said sun, 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 sun. And then I've looked this morning and um, thank you, everybody. You can all hear me. That's good. And um, they said that now tomorrow we're meant to get some rain. So that would be nice. Um, just cool things down a bit, water the garden. So um, thank you, everybody. There we go. I think that's Stuart. Sounds great. Thanks, Stuart. Perfect. So I thought we would have it nice and chilled. And we're going to think cool thoughts. Um, the scene that we're looking at is perfect, isn't it? It's a, a boat on the beach. So just imagine that lovely sea breeze coming in. Um, yeah, and we, we shall see how it goes today. So, um, yeah, just a little bit warm. But if we think snow and snowmen and snowball fights, then maybe we'll just all sort of cool down a little bit. So I so hope everyone's well and raring to go for another Groovy Tuesday. Who did any Pico cutting last week? Did anyone do any homework? Did I do any homework? Mm -mm -mm. No, I didn't. So um, we'll just give you a few more minutes just to, to pull up a chair, grab a nice cool drink or a hot drink. I've got one of each. So um, that'll keep me going. So, um, and then we'll, we'll have a look at where we're heading this week. So it's been a really nice journey looking back at um, one of the past issues from Linda and it sort of it builds that story doesn't it of where all of the um, the easy layout plates st stemmed from and so it was a design created by Linda and then a conversation with Barbara and Linda and that's where the easy layout plates all came from so rather than sort of spend time looking at sort of like the, the layout, so to speak, the easy layout plates give you that perfectly, as well as a lot of detail in the actual designs. And um, I've got all my plates here because I kept everything in, in one folder. So let me just zoom out a little bit. So it's not out of focus, it's just, it's in my folder. Okay. So you can see you've got these lovely designs and this is the, the latest collection from Linda. And she always puts so many different details and elements on them that can interchange with all of the different designs. Um, so, and you can take elements of it. You don't have to do the whole thing. You could just sort of do that half, 
and then just continue that line up there to bring it together. So that's what I love about the Groovy system, the versatility of being able to do different things with it. See, in this design, sort of, it's like um, a Catherine wheel. That's what that one reminds me of. Um, the love one, I love these little, love, love the little tags. Um, this one, very, I like this one as well. The diff, I like that you've got the flowers. You've got two flowers. So you've got the daisies in different configurations. You've got the poppies. You've got the barley or the wheat. Um, then you've got this one. It's got some lovely roses in. Really, really beautiful. And then we go back to the original collection. So we've got the special delivery. This is nice. I like this one. Again, depending on what you decide to put in there can determine whether it's masculine or feminine. A little cool yule. There we go. We're starting to cool down now. We're going into, into winter with the lovely little snowmen. Beautiful. And then we've got the sparkle at Christmas. But if you take off the, the wings, it's just a lovely little ballerina. Then we've got the gardening one, which I'm sure a lot of you are out there doing your gardening when it cools down. And then, so this one's really nice because it sort of ties in with the club back issues, doesn't it? So you've got the lovely little boat, but in a different configuration. You've got another, you've got a different, um, what's the word, lighthouse. I love the little porthole and the, the broken plank of wood for the signage. Then you've got, there we go, time to relax, a lovely little bubble bath. So you've got a real sort of selection of different designs. And really, I mean, that they serve two purposes. One, to give you your easy layout, to fill in with whatever you wish to. Um, or two, sort of just taking them exactly how they come. So, um, so, so it's nice to sort of have taken it back to where it all started over the past couple of weeks with Groovy Tuesday to show this is how you can do it. But if you want to, then obviously you've got those plates to do that as well. Okay, so let's have a look at the two pieces that Linda created for this project. So the back issue is still available. I'm sure Stuart will put, pop the link up to issue 65. So yeah, issue 65 of the club. I've been um, packing orders this week and um, noticed that many of you have been adding that into your basket. And if you're not in the club, it's a really nice sort of introduction to, to how the Groovy Club and all of our clubs work. Um, and we do it for stamp, stencil, groovy and dye. And you always get a double-sided project. Um, groovy, designed and created by the lovely Linda Williams. Um, I often do the dye one. Barb does the stamping and the stencil. I think with Jilly and Jane, sort of. So it gives you a real variety on different techniques, but it guides you through in both pictorial and also written instruction as well. And what we've done over the past couple of weeks, we've broken it down um, because some people may prefer to sort of see it in action. And it's a, a really nice one to sort of get started with if you're thinking, hmm, what's all this crafty club all about? Um, there is a, a page specifically on the website that explains all about the different clubs. You can join one, two, three. It's a 12-month membership. And many of you I know um, in Groovy Tuesday already belong to one, two, three, or all four of them. Um, we've just finished our members half price sale. And obviously you get discount 10, 15%, depending on how many clubs you're in. You get the newsletter from Barb. Barb's just about to write this month's newsletter. Um, just waiting for the, this month to come back from the printers and that will start going out. So it's a really nice sort of what's going on. But to have, I always, I remember when um, I belonged to the club back in the day before when I was sort of a, 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 an at-home crafter as a hobby sort of thing. Um, it was nice to get that envelope come through the door um every month it was like christmas once a month um or a birthday once a month whichever way you want to to look at it but it, it's nice because you can look at the designs and think oh i've got a stamp or i've got a die or 
a groovy or a stencil. I like that technique, I'm gonna try it with this particular design. So sometimes if you're looking, uh, maybe you've lost your mojo, maybe this hot weather's dried it all up and, um, and you're thinking, oh, you wanna kickstart your mojo when it's cooled down a bit, then the clubs are a fantastic way to, to do that, I think anyway. So, so yeah, so Stuart will pop the link up to the club page that gives you all the information if you, if you wanted to have a read up on that later. Alternatively, you can give Janine a call in the office and she will talk you through all the, the different club options, um, all the different benefits, everything else. Okay, right, so that was one of the cards we looked at. And then the next one we moved on to was this one. And what we decided, what we, what I decided or thought was a good idea was, I mean, I love this frame that Linda has created around the outside. And at the time we had this particular plate on special offer. And this is a um, embossed pattern grid designed by Josie, but it's got one, two, three instant frames. Now this is an A4 square. I mean, if you look at the size of my hand, you can see how big it is. And, but you can extend them. You've got these little, what Josie, I call them buckles, but Josie calls them extenders. So if you wanted to, you can take the design, you can make it into a border. You've got lovely little corners. Um, you could just do a complete border of that particular design. So I thought rather than um, copy Linda's piece exactly, we sort of go off on a little um, variant, a tangent, tangent, tandem, tandem. That's a bike group for two people, is it? Anyway, we, we we divert the process slightly. That's still not the right word, but you know what I mean. So we took this frame here and we just embossed it exactly how it came. Okay, so if I line that up on there, you can see, let me zoom in a little bit now. Ooh, up and down. All right, so I'm going to zoom in now. I'll come in. Oh, oh. In. I need to go that way. There we go. I won't be doing much of this up and down. <laughs> Too warm for that. Too much movement. <laughs> so you can see that, that if, if I do that, it, it looks a bit. Woo. But we just emboss the frame. Exactly. We started off with a, the nested square, didn't we? To put the to confine the area, and then we emboss the pattern using the number two groovy tool. And then what I thought would be a nice idea was when we have a look. If we turn it over now and we look at the front, um, I wonder if I come in on this camera. That was a little bit. Clear. You can see then what we did last week was we took the basic bold grid. And then we perforated inside all of those little boxes. Okay. And then I thought today we'd have a go at doing some, some Pico cutting. Whee! That's right. One of the, the foam soundproofing just <laughs> came unstuck on the wall. Luckily it's over the far side. So um, it didn't, yeah. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. It's all good fun here in the Shack Shack in Groovy Tuesday. Right, okay. So, Pico cutting. Maybe you're, you're new to Groovy Tuesday. If you are, welcome. Don't worry if you think you're coming in halfway through. You can go back and watch all of the previous episodes on the Clarity YouTube page, together with all the Shack Shacks from Barb. Um, so if you missed yesterday's Shack, you can go back and watch that on the Clarity um, YouTube page. I'm sure Stuart will pop a link up for that as well for you. Okay. Now, Pico cutting. We're going to sort of warm up a little bit, not too much stretching. And whenever I go to do my Pico cutting, um, I always warm up first rather than sort of going cold which sounds a bit weird considering it, it's so warm at the moment. But you know what I mean? Sort of, you just warm up, you get your hands used to the, the movement. Okay. Um, so what I tend to do is I'll take a straight line with a row of perforated dots 
um, row of perforate, a row of perforations, and then practice on that first, just to get my hand in, just to get comfortable, relax into it, and then I'll go into my finished piece. Rather than go straight in, and it's not exactly what I was expecting, because I need to just adjust the angle of the scissors or the way I'm holding it. Um, so it's always a good thing. And Linda often says this as well, that before she goes in, same when she's doing um, white work, um, she often warms up first rather than goes straight into her piece of artwork. So just for the sake of a sort of a, a few minutes or so, I think it's a really good idea maybe to give it a go yourself. Um, for me, it definitely makes a difference. It really does. So, um, so today, if we want to give Pico cutting a go, what we're going to need is a piece of artwork that we did last week. Okay. Now, some of you may have already gone in and done your Pico cutting, but that's fine. So you can just chill and enjoy the conversation in the room. Okay. So we're going to need a piece of artwork then we're going to need, I've got my 12 by 12 super foam, and then we have two different um, sets of snips, scissors. We have the exclusive scissors. Ooh, a nice bit of glare on there. There we go. So we've got the exclusive scissors, um, which Barb tends to use. We then have the, the Perga cutters. And then finally, we have the ring lock scissors and what you'll notice that all of them have this fantastic curve to them i'll try and get them all see if i can get them all to stand on their side just like that so you can see how they've all got that lovely curve okay and what you'll also notice if i open them all up is they are all super sharp and pointed let me bring that in like that so you can see. Okay. If I'm going to bring it up a little bit closer to the camera so you can really see. Now, these are mine um, that I use. So these are well-loved, these scissors. And it's really weird because although all the scissors are the same, i.e. all the exclusives are the same, the perga cutters and the ring locks, I can pick up somebody else's pair and I won't get the same cut do you know what I mean it's it's weird um I'm sure if I persevered I would but it's yeah it, it's really weird so Stuart will pop the link up to all of the different scissors now if you've recently gone for the groovy grid starter kit then you'll you'll have those in there ready to start your pico journey and these are a really good pair to get you going they're the cheapest option um but it's a good place to get started for me personally I, I mean i can use all three of them okay but my preference is either the ring lock or the perga cutters sometimes i get a better cut from the perga cutters sometimes i'll get a better cut from the ring lock and the reason I have a preference to those is, let me bring these two together. You can see that the finger holes on the ring locks are bigger. So I've got sort of like chunky fingers, I've got a big thumb. So when I'm working, they sit more comfortably within the scissors, okay? So it's all about getting comfortable um, and just enjoying cutting really so we're going to need our, our weapons of choice okay so let me pop those to one side i've got my super foam you can use your pico foam if you have that you just need something foamy to work on so we're going to need that what else are we going to need a pair of glasses if you need your glasses um which i do and I'm going to use my groovy guard because my hands are really warm. And I'm going to use that to, to lean on. Okay. So that's what we're going to need for our finish piece. Then for our practice piece, what we're going to need is I've got my plate mate that's got my basic straight 
grid in there. Another piece of parchment. I've got a scrap here. And then all I want is um, a straight line. Okay, so I can take the straight line from the frame that's on this plate. Number one tool, tumble dry sheet, and a one needle bolt. So that's what we're going to use for our warm up. Okay. So one needle bolt, one needle, groovy tool, piece of parchment, a straight line, and the bold grid. Okay. Oh dear. It's tropical in here. <laughs> If I start melting in front of you, then don't worry, someone will come and rescue me. It'll be fine. It's actually a lot cooler than what, if I sit forward, it's a lot cooler than what I thought it would be. I mean, yesterday when I opened the door, when Barb finished the shack and I opened the door, the heat went whoosh. Um, I mean, I don't mind the heat as long as I'm sitting next to a swimming pool or, a, or the sea, but Hey ho, this is Eden Bridge and this is Groovy Tuesday and we're just going to chill out for the next 40 odd minutes or so and just get into and do some groovy or just sit there and enjoy the company. You know, there, there's no pressure, there's no requirement, um, there's no rules. I'm not going to come around and say, oh, you haven't done this. Okay. Right, I think I've waffled enough. So, I think we're all ready to get snipping. So what we're gonna do first, I just want a, I need my tumble dry sheet just to wipe my parchment. And we're gonna wipe both sides, just out of habit. And I just want a straight line. Okay, so I'm gonna use my number one tool to give me my line in which to work. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to line it up against, I tend to go with the, I'll zoom in in a moment, I tend to go up against that edge there. I need groovy tabs, of course I need my groovy tabs. Where would I be without my groovy tabs? Okay, so I'm putting a straight line on the second row of dots and then my groovy guard to hold my parchment in place. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to zoom in. Which way have I got to go? I've got to go that way. And I'll come in slowly. Okay. Right. Hopefully you can see that nice and clearly. Groovy guard to hold my parchment in place and my glasses. Okay. And my one needle bolt. And all we're gonna do is just create a row of perfect perforations. And the grid, I mean, you could do this with a two needle tool if you choose to, without the grid. It's entirely up to you. But I just find it's easier just to use the grid to give me that perfect row. Okay. So who's grooving along today or is it too, too warm for you to groove along to today? I, I understand that if it is. You know you can go back and watch it again and again if you choose to. And it doesn't take long. I mean, I probably don't need this many perforations, but what I wanted to do was to show you the different scissors if you are new to, to pico cutting. Okay, right. Lid on the tool. And now we can remove our parchment. Okay. Let's pop that somewhere safe. Now, when I'm pico cutting, I prefer personally to do it on the flat. Okay. 
some people prefer to do it in their hand. I mean, when I first learned, um, I learned by holding it in my hand because I could feel how far the scissors needed to go into. Um, because you don't want to go in too far with the tips of the scissors because what all that will happen is that the blade will cut between the perforations. Okay. Look, you can, let me show you this. That's just holding it in my hand. The heat from my hand has just made the parchment curl up. It's like those little fishes. Remember those little fishes that used to tell you things? <laughs> right, okay. So for me, it's definitely worth holding it on the flat. Okay, so are we ready to warm up those fingers? Those hands don't need to be warm. Stretch, give you give your fingers a little wiggle just to get them going. I don't know why I'm doing that one because I do it with my right hand, but it seems silly going like that. So we do it with both. Get them both going. Okay. Right, okay. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Let's go with the exclusives first. Okay. Various different ways of holding them. There's no right or wrong, and it applies to all three of the different types of scissors. You can have the spoon position where the curve's going up, or you can have it in the fork position where the curve is going down. Okay. For me personally, I prefer the spoon position the curve going up. If I was going in the fork position, then I would take these two fingers and go in from the top. Okay, that's how I first learned, and that's how traditionally Pergamano um, tutors were taught how to, to hold the scissors. Okay, but what I tend to do is come in with my thumb and my forefinger, and then I use these fingers to, to balance. Okay, now, because I'm using the, the 12 by 12, I've got a more comfortable position for my wrist. My wrist is actually sitting very comfortably on the mat. Okay. And then all I'm going to do is I use this finger. Let me come up a little bit down here. I use this finger to sort of not balance the scissors on, I wonder if I come in on this one. There we go. Is that better? And it is literally just the tips. So if you hold the scissors upright, and you just need to get them in the right spacing so that the tips of each of the scissors go into each of the perforations. Okay. And then I, I'm just bringing it back slightly. And then I'm going to squeeze. Now I haven't tilted in any direction, all I'm doing is squeezing, okay? Now, some people prefer to work away from them. Some people prefer to work towards them. Some people like to give a twist away or a twist towards. It's whatever works for you at the time, okay? So I'm literally just putting the tips of the scissors in, and as I squeeze in, I can see the parchment coming together into a point, and then I snip. Okay. So what we're going to do, so what happens is you perforate the two holes, okay, and then you go in. So you're just moving along one hole at a time, or one perforation. Okay. Right. So this, let me take a pen. This is going to be, let's just, I'm going to write gently on there. This is the exclusive. The parchment's gone white because I'm not on a soft mat. Then this will be the Perga cutters. And then this will be the ring lock. Okay. Just so we can sort of see the difference. And what I'm going to do, I wonder if I can zoom in a little bit more on that one. So just bear with me while I go around to that camera and just zoom in a little bit more. Okay, there we go. 
out a little bit. I think that should be okay. And then I'm gonna adjust the overhead one as well so I can come in closer on that one. There we go. Right. And what I need you to do is tell me which camera you prefer. So this is, what we'll call this one the overhead, okay? So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go with the, the Perga cutters and I'm doing the same thing. I'm going in the spoon position. So let's try, so this is on the, the overhead and this is on the side camera. So which one is better? Let's try, we'll try a bit of both, shall we? Okay, so tips of the scissors, squeeze, and then release. Now what you don't want to do with these, because these are spring loaded, what you don't want to do is that when you snip within the perforations, what you don't want to do is release before you withdraw the scissors. Because if you do that, what it's going to do, it's going to flatten your picots. So gently squeeze and pull the scissors out. Okay, and then just going to go each perforation. I'm just going to go along. So for me today, I'm not getting a very good result with the well, I don't know. All will be revealed when we cut away the waste. So this area here is the waste area, which will fall away. Okay, so, all right, everyone's shouting at me. Overhead, overhead, overhead. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I forgot to look up to see what the response was. Apologies. Okay, I think that's okay, but we, we'll do the big reveal in a moment. So we've got the exclusive, we've got the Perga cutters, and now we're gonna try the ring lock. Okay, so it's the same as before. Okay, spoon position. My fingers come in from underneath. And then we're just going to step. Now, when you're practicing or you're warming up, a straight line is always going to be less forgiving, okay? Because your, your eye is automatically drawn to the perfection of the straight line, okay? So when we go to our piece of artwork, any little imperfections, unless you're Linda Williams, are not really gonna show. Not that Linda has any imperfections, I may add. But you know what I mean, don't you? Okay, so let's cut away now the waste. Should use normal scissors for this, but hey ho. So we're going to cut there. Got carried away with the There we go. Right, okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to hold this up now. Okay, so let's have a look. It'd be easy if I bring it up to the camera. So when we have a look at the exclusive, there's one sort of dodgy little pico there. Okay. Then we move along to the Perga cutters and it starts off really rough. Okay. But it improves as the row goes along. And then finally, we've got the ring lock. But when you look at it from a distance, because you're not gonna have it magnified under a great big camera when you give it to somebody. All right, let me take my glasses off. I'd be happy with all of that on my finished piece, okay? 
so don't sort of beat yourself up thinking oh it, it's not perfect that's one of the reasons why it's a really sort of good idea just to, to practice first, especially if you're new to it or you wanna do your piece of artwork and you spent the time doing your white work, doing your coloring and everything else. And then you feel a little bit apprehensive about, oh, I've got to do the Pico cutting now. What if it doesn't look right? At the end of the day, only you will know where you've gone wrong okay so unless the only reason is if you you're holding the scissors in the wrong place and you're cutting the good bit and you're throwing the good bit away but you would still what was that if you give it to another parcher that's doing pico cutting they may examine it and go oh that pico there but i don't think they will because everyone has been in that position one time or the, or another um i've seen some of the, the work that sort of like the people that have been doing it for years and years and years and mistakes happen do you know what i mean you, you could be snipping and the door could go and you jump and or the dog barks or the cat jumps on the table don't what is it that, what's that saying that bob says don't don't stress the small stuff no there's another one what is it uh there's something about don't something the small stuff i'm sure somebody will pop in pop up and tell me on the the messengers don't sweat the small stuff that's it that's it because it is it, the pico is so small need glasses oh nearly poked my eye out then need glasses to see it okay right so had a warm up so let's go to our finished piece okay right where's it gone oh it's it's on the white it's on the white foam i couldn't see it okay so we're going to concentrate Woo! concentrate on the overhead and what we're going to do we're going to create little apertures within each of these little boxes that we created that's if you want to oh want to that's if you want to you don't have to it's entirely up to you now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start on this row and I'm going to go all the way along. So I'm going to keep my parchment in one position. Okay. And I'm going to use my groove. Ooh, won't, yeah. I'm going to use my ring locks. So let me just turn it so it's comfortable for me. So comfortable for me is in this position. Okay. So my fingers are here and it's at an angle it's not see if I was to hold it this way my my wrist is turned okay so at an angle I wonder if I, I'll zoom out a little bit later so you can see the angle in which hang on let me do it now because I think it's important just to show so let me zoom out I will zoom back in Okay, so we're going to zoom out. So I'm going to go out quite a bit just so that you can see. Okay, before I start. So you can see I've got my, my mat is square. My work is at an angle. I've got my scissors, but my wrist is straight to my body. Okay. So, and I'm resting... For me, the, the 12 by 12 makes a, a big difference. I mean, it's not necessary, but for me, my hand is then at the right level. I mean, you may find it easier to come off if you've got the A4, and then you're automatically lower than the parchment. Okay, have a go. Just do a practice piece and see which works for you. If you've got the 12 by 12, and that works, but you can see I've got the larger area. What you also may find if you have a light panel and you've got the white super foam, that definitely helps to illuminate the perforations as well. So if you're fine, maybe you're doing it later in the evening, then for me, I would definitely be using the light panel with the white super foam, okay? So let me zoom back in, pop those scissors down there. A bit like a bit of a yo-yo today, isn't it? In and out. 
What's that song? Round around the garden. Okay, I'm going to come in. Okay, I think that's close enough. Is that close enough or do I need to come in a little bit closer? There we go. Josie's saying it's exactly the angle that she works at when she's snipping as well. Okay. And as Jane says, that's what butterflies, bows, and also as Tina says, snowflakes are made for. Okay. So into the spoon position. And I'm going to go down this row first. So it's snip, snip. And I'm cutting over all of the other perforations because it's the piece in the middle that's going to fall away. Okay. So once you get into it, see for me, I prefer doing it this way all in a row rather than doing the boxes one at a time because you're constantly handling the parchment and it takes longer. Okay, so we're just going along and we're doing all in one direction. And you'll notice that I am tilting slightly. It's sort of, um, I don't do it so much with the other scissors, just with the ring lock. It's really weird, isn't it? So what we're gonna do now, <coughs> excuse me, is I'm gonna do this row now, because this is the same direction. And this hand isn't moving my work is moving, so it's as if my, so my left hand is feeding the parchment like a, a sewing machine. Because my hand is very comfortable in the position that I'm holding them. Okay. So then you, you go along and you think, oh, what if I miss one? It doesn't matter if you miss one. It really doesn't. Because if you've missed one, you'll know because it doesn't fall out at the end. Okay. So I've done all of that side. Now I'm going to turn it round. Now, okay. I'm now going to be leaning across my work. So this is definitely where the groovy guard comes into play. To rest on. So it's literally the tips of the scissors are going in to the parchment. Okay. And it's really satisfying. I don't know if you can hear those little snips or whether you can hear the sounds of the fan underneath. Okay, so I'm going to move it along a little bit more in the center again. Okay, and then I'm just going to carry on snipping away. There we go. And you sort of, you get into a rhythm as Ken said, it's good to get all your snips in a row. It sure is, Ken. Okay, so I'm going to turn it this way now. Oh, no, I've done both rows. No, I didn't do both rows, did I? See, I'm getting carried away now. Come back into shot. Okay. And then we're just going to carry on. See, for me, the, the snipping is just as relaxing as embossing the dots, and tracing out the design. So I completely forgot that we have a bit of a heat wave outside. I'm nice and cool and calm. Really am. 
this is great for who is it that's sitting outside under the parasol this would be great for doing outside really would bright sunshine okay so i've done both sides of those now okay so now i'm gonna turn it around where am i going let's have a look where am i there we go that's the downside of being zoomed out so much so now we're going to go across this top row Going to jump down to the next one so you'll see that every single time i'm over the waist okay so i can bring that up Who enjoys pico cutting? <clears throat> I'm not going to ask Josie that question because I know the answer to that. Or who's still getting to grips? Who's still trying to get all their, their picos, their snips in a row, as Ken would put it? Groovy card. <coughs> Bit too far up. Groovy guard definitely makes a difference. I mean, you saw the, the heat coming off my hand when I held that practice piece, how it just curved. There we go. And it doesn't take long. Once you get into a rhythm, it really doesn't take long to complete an area. And for me, <clears throat> I'd love doing um, the Pico cutting within the design. So that's where the, the Pico dies really come into their own right. Because I think I would get bored. Well, I know you used to. I'd get bored just Pico cutting out the piece. I mean, nine times out of ten, like this square frame... I wouldn't perforate around the outside. I would just use a craft knife and a ruler to trim it down because I'd rather spend the time perforating within the design. Okay, so let's turn that round now. And we're going to do, so this is where it will now all start to, if I've snipped everywhere, all start to fall out. Okay, because this is the final side. Of the little boxes and i'm going to try not to move the part chart. i'm going to move the mat so that the pieces don't fall out so we can do a big reveal okay because that's what i love the the big reveal and then see how many bits i've missed okay carefully does it All right, I'm going to have to move the mat forward now. Okay. Because I don't want to move it. Don't want to reveal those little boxes. They're jumping about up there. Can you see them moving? <laughs> oh, itchy nose. Okay. I love this. <clears throat> for me, this is Pico for me at its best. Um, and um, because <clears throat> it doesn't need to be 100% perfect. It really doesn't. It's the overall effect that we end up with. Okay, I think we're coming up to the final furlong. Try not to move the parchment so we can get the big reveal. I f Do I feel confident? I reckon I've probably missed one or two snips where I keep looking up to see <clears throat> the comments. Okay, that's the final snip. Are we ready? So let me bring this round this way. Oh, it's revealing itself already. 
Okay, I need a, a sip of drink for this. Right, okay. Ready? Dum, dum, dum. Give it a little tap. Now, is that? No, nope, that's just hanging in by a thread. Just take my finger underneath. Ah, oh, look at that. I didn't miss any. Well pleased with that. Let me, um, let's take this off from here. Let's pop, get rid of those little bits of waste. And then we'll bring it up close and we'll inspect it if we wish to. Okay. Whee, where am I going? Oh, I'm going that way. I can't see now. Hang on. Left a bit. <laughs> okay. All right, we're in the right position now. I'm going to slowly go along. A few little imperfections. But you know what? When I bring it down, I've got the effect that I want. Those lovely little aperture windows. Okay. And for me, that was the way in which I learned to perfect my Pico cutting, was just small areas like that. Crosses are the best way of, I found for me personally, just to do a row of crosses, okay? And that's what I found helped me to perfect mine with the angle of the scissors, um, the comfort comfortability, the angle in which I held, held my wrist, um, so if I'm in my hand, um, so if I'm holding it in my hand, for example, and I'm doing it, I found that this arm was going up and down like a yo-yo. Uh, it didn't need to, it was that psychological effect of in, down thing. But whereas when I'm on the flat, for me personally, I find I enjoy it more, if that sort of makes sense. So you'll find something that will work for you. So if you are new to groovy and pico cutting, then practice. Don't go straight into a piece of artwork that you spent some time working on and then you do it. It's like anything, isn't it? You, you do something and you're making a card for somebody, for example, and you do something and you think, oh, maybe I'll put this on it, maybe I'll put that on it, or I'll put a bit of glitter and you do it and you think, hmm. I shouldn't have done that too much. Whereas if you practice on a piece first, it's the same when I'm coloring in, I will never color in directly onto my finished piece. I would always look at the colors on the same material. So if I'm coloring on parchment, say I'm coloring in on colored parchment, for example, and I take the Perga color pens, and I'm not sure whether the color will go with it. Then I take the same piece of parchment and then I'll color on that. And if I think, yeah, you know what? That works. Then I'll go into my finished piece. So it's the same with sort of the Pico cutting. Don't feel that you have to do it. And don't feel that, oh, I've got to do it. And it's got to look like this. And it's got to look like that. There's some imperfections in those rows that I've just created. But I'm happy with the overall effect. Okay. Sometimes we can overthink things, okay? I mean, Jane said it looks like little windmills. They do, don't they? Um, and I've often seen Josie doing um, pieces and, and Tina and the different results you get from how many perforations there are in the area um, to the effect that you can get. They can look like stars. What was it Tina was doing the other day on um, the Pergamano show? She was using her fantastic border grids um and she was creating snowflakes and just by sort of joining dots up and and doing flowers and sometimes it, it's good to sort of if you've got the time maybe today in the warm weather and you think i'm not going out maybe i'll just have a play emboss some dots out um go back and watch tina on creating craft when she was on last week on the pergamano show using a fantastic II books. There's so much inspiration and knowledge 
within those books and those shows from what Tina created that you'll think, oh, I didn't think of that. Because I was watching and I thought, wow, what? I'm always learning. And for me, it's that sort of that part of, um, I'm, I'm always open to learning, okay? I'll never think, oh, I can do that. Because why would I think that? And sometimes we, we sort of, we look at things and as Barb said uh, on a number of occasions, sometimes make a card and then decide who it's for. I know I, I was the same back in the day when I used to make cards for people and someone would ring me and say, oh, it's such and such's birthday, they like such and such. I had a room for the crafts off. But do you think I could find anything that I thought was suitable? No. So if I was making cards and then I showed people and they go, oh, that's it, that's perfect, that's for such and such. So sometimes we, we can put ourselves under a little bit too much pressure to, to perform and to please. Um, and for me, crafting's not about that. It's all about sort of enjoying it um, and doing it for the sake of doing it. Some people just make cards and they just pile up and, and that's it. Um, we all have different reasons for doing that. So maybe today, if you're at a loose end in this warm weather, just have a go at different things with the pico cutting, with the perforating, with the embossing, and see what you come up with. You may come up with the next best thing since sliced bread, who knows? Um, sometimes we can be just as creative playing as we can when we're creating. God, that sounded really deep, didn't it? Really deep. I don't know where that came from. I didn't mean to sort of go off on that. But I think it, it it's good to, it, sometimes it's how I feel if I'm making a card for someone. Um, whereas if I make a card and I go, oh, that'll suit that person. Um, playing. This is all I'm doing today. I'm just playing. I'm just in the fortunate position that I share my playing with everybody at home and that you choose to join in or not or just tune in and watch and um so should we do a little bit more pico cutting okay let's come back in then so let's see if we can do this row here so i'm going to hold it at an angle again and where's my peg cutters glasses on and we're just gonna snip and it's all about enjoying it okay and if there are any imperfections it's because i've definitely got imperfections in the in some of the snips i've created in this project but I always say it's the overall effect that you get. The only time that I'd go a little bit, oh, I shouldn't have done that, would be maybe if I put a perforation in the wrong place. And I did that, didn't I? I did it on one of the, the white dots. Can't remember where it was. I remember last week I said, so what you don't want to do is you don't want to perforate your white dots. And what did I do? I perforated the white dot. But I can't even see it now, even with my glasses on. Because so I'd forgotten about that until I just said it. But I'm sure I'll find it during the course of doing the, the pico cutting. So now I'm going to turn it around again. Groovy guard definitely coming to play now. Okay. The hands are definitely warm. And they've got hand cream on. I shouldn't have put on beforehand. But hey, hey. Let me just go in. So, what have we got this week? So, to, uh, where are we now? Tuesday. Yeah, of course it's Tuesday. Groovy Tuesday. So, on Thursday, we're back in the shack with Barb doing those fantastic um, um, droplets. They are so magical. They really are. 
Um, and I know next week you're going to be having a look at the spheres. That just looked as if it was bouncing off the page. Right, okay, here we go. This is where I perforated the dots as well. So I'm just going to ignore that little mistake. So yeah, so Thursday at 10 o'clock, back in the Shack Shack with Barb. And then on Saturday on Create and Craft, the lovely Tina will be um, showcasing her beautiful butterfly petites. Um, just the one hour on Saturday. So if you're looking for some fantastic ideas and inspiration, then make sure you tune in then. And then next week, I'll be back with you again on Groovy Tuesday. And I think what we'll do, we'll carry on. We'll have a, a bit of a, a refresher on the, the Pico cutting and carry on this piece. Okay. So we've done that one. So now let's turn it round. Now we're going to go this way. I know I've missed a complete row on this one. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go back and do it. So I forgot the row down this side, didn't I? Or did I? No, it's a row on this side. But it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. As I say, maybe you might find it easier doing pico cutting on um, on the light panel. Maybe you'll find that that's easier if you've got that. So we're just going to finish off this little section. And then we're, we're halfway around the square then, aren't we? Okay. They're starting to fall out now. There we go. And so I've just got to do that one more row. So that top row has fallen out. And then really bring it back in. And then this row should now fall out. So I'm ignoring, ignoring those little perforations where I shouldn't have. Because only I know they're there. Nobody else knows they're there, do you? <laughs> oh, dear. And then we're going to go along. There we go, we're coming down to the finishing line now, and we're there. Ta -da. Okay, let's get rid of these little bits. I'm sure you could use those for confetti. There we go. So my little imperfections are there, but I bet if I told you if I hadn't have told you they were there, you wouldn't have noticed, would you? So, okay. So, I hope you've enjoyed that. I've thoroughly enjoyed myself today. Just sort of chilling out, literally chilling out. I don't feel hot and bothered whatsoever. It's really weird. That distraction made me completely forget how warm it is. Weird really really weird the way the the mind plays games or tricks you into thinking of things so thank you again for joining me i will be back in the room with you on thursday with barb continuing the fantastic um droplet journey and then i will see you next tuesday and we'll carry on with some more pico cutting so i hope you've enjoyed that thank you very much for joining me thank you for stuart for your help and the fantastic design team i saw they were sort of answering all different questions as they popped up um, and I will see you all soon. Stay safe, drink plenty of liquid, and um, stay in the shade. See you next week. Bye-bye.